So are you an evil person? No, you're not. So when money comes into your hands, it becomes anointed. It becomes blessed. It becomes ordained by God. Now, if you're not using it right, well, hey, then you're using it to honor the enemy. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm saying when it, money comes into the hands of believers, it's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's there to resolve a problem. And when you start to understand that God set up the system for us to function in the world. Wise as a serpent, meek as a dove. We gotta know how to we gotta know how to function. We gotta have that balance in our lives. Okay, so now one more one more uh, definition here. Uh, okay, I didn't finish at one. It says the product of imagining a conception or mental creation, often a basis or fanciful one. So again, this is now you know, I don't want to get into to that degree where where we get into just um sort of like a human humanistic mindset. I'm talking about you having a mind and you can use it. And God gave us an imagination. So now let's go to the scripture again in 2 Corinthians now. And it says, and here in the connotation of this, this is in the context of this, this is a negative, this is a negative imagination. Okay? But notice this. Okay, let's let's read it again. He says, uh, verse 5. Casting down imaginations. Okay, so first thing he names off, verse number three, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Okay, then he says in verse number four that, that our warfare is not carnal. We're, so then if it's not carnal, then what is it? Spiritual. It's spiritual. So then what is spiritual? What spiritual is he referring to? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the things that are taking place in the mind. What is, what in, because the next verse is going to go into what? Imagination. You all see that? So now think about this. Words are spiritual. Words are spiritual in nature. So words come from a spiritual source. And words are meant to be planted in your mind. That's what words are for. You all with me on that? God's word was given to us and spoken to us. We heard the word. The, everything started off with God what? Saying. If it, were, if it was not for God speaking, nothing would have happened. God spoke, thus it came to pass. It, it happened. Isn't that right? So now, we function off of words. Everything we do in life, we function off of words. And we function off of the words of those we believe. Do you believe my words? Do y'all believe my words? Because if you don't believe my words, those words are falling on deaf ears. You may be hearing, but you are not listening. So words impact your mind. They were meant to create images. That's why Paul said... Casting down imaginations. Notice he didn't say this. He didn't say, get rid of your imagination. He didn't say that. He said to get rid of what imaginations? What imaginations? Anything that's going to be contrary to my obedience to God. See, the only way I'm going to obey God is I got to see it. And I'm not talking about see it, seeing it physically. I need to see it in my eyes, my, in, in the, my eyes mind. Like what Matthew 6.22 says to us. What is Matthew? Do you guys remember that? Matthew 6. Okay, well, let's look, let's look at that. What? No, Matthew. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, this is Matthew 6.22. Y'all got it? Remember that? Matthew 6.22. You remember that? Remember, I've, I've shared this with you guys before. The light of the body is what? So think about it. And I, I would want to say it this way. That the light of the mind is the eye. 
Okay, so that's just an analogy. It's not what Jesus said. Jesus said the light of the body is the eye. What does that mean? The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. What is he talking about? Yeah. He's talking about being able to see in, with your eye's mind. Is that the way you phrase that? Mind's eye. Yeah, I knew it was, something was, I was feeling like man, something's wrong with that. Mind's eye. <laughs> you, you all understand? Being able to see with your mind's eye so that, so that you can do something. If, you, if your mind's eye does not see it, you will not do it. It's, it's like that in life, just natural things. If you don't understand, you won't do it. You're not going to do it. That's how wise you are. Sometimes people's foolishness is their wisdom. And they end up stuck. You know what I mean? So it says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, what does the word single mean? It means whole, one, you're focused. And, and, and you remember, if, if you don't know where you're going, you cannot see where you're going. You're going to, you, any road, you, that's why there's going to be inconsistencies in you. you. I mean, you just, flaky, flaky Christians. You, you, you understand what I mean? It's like, you say it, you don't do it. It's like, ah, that, you, you know how, you know, Proverbs gives, Proverbs gives an excellent analogy of that. An unfaithful man is like a foot out of joint or a broken tooth. Anybody sprang their ankle before? And have you tried to stand on it right after? Oh, you remember this in the box? <laughs> but the point being is that, you do, what does it do? What does it make you do? How, you, you're, you're, de, you're going, your body, your whole body is dependent on that joint, that ankle. And you go to step on it, and it's not, and it's a, it's out of joint, not just spraying, but out of joint. How's that going to feel? I got hit by a truck. Got drug un under that truck. Got knocked out. When I woke up, what do you do naturally when you wake up? Get up. So I go to get up. My leg is broken. It is broken. So the femur bone was about almost ready to pop out of my out of my thigh. So I'm, I'm ready to get up. Gah! <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> I mean, it's there, but it's painful. And that's what it is. Inconsistency is painful. Lack of responsibility. Not being faithful. Not being committed. It's, it's painful. It's painful to you and it's painful to those that are depending on you. You, you understand? You have a broken tooth, you have a broken tooth, and you go to bite down on that. What's going to happen? Yeah, that right. Especially if it's a live tooth, you got some nerve, nerves connected to it. Yeah, not, not a root canal tooth, but a, a tooth that has some canals that are live. So you go to bite on that. <laughs> when I was sitting on the dentist chair, and he wanted to see if my tooth was still alive. And he put some air on it. And those of you that have gone to the dentist may relate to this. And my whole body went off that chair. One move. Yeah, I mean, then he, then he even said, you want to meet me in the back parking lot? And I said, yes. <laughs> Let me inflict some pain on you. <laughs> but what's the point is that God, God wants us, if we cannot see what we're supposed to do, let me, let me say it to you this way. If you cannot write what you see, you will not do it. You got to be able to write it. Got to draw it. If you, can't, if you cannot write it, you're not going to do it. 
You got to have it that clear. You, you know what I would define this as? You got to have a clear definition of your purpose in life. You got to be able to see it. And if you don't see it, you are not going to do it. And what ends up happening is you, you start jumping from one career to another. Start doing, going to taking up this course and that course, then you stop, no, that's not right, no, then I, I should do this, I'm going to do that, no, then you stop that, then I'm going to do this, I'm gonna do, then you stop that, because you, you haven't got clear definition. You, you got to be like a bulldog in a fight. You ever seen a bulldog fight? I mean, I'm sorry, a pit bull. A pit bull fight. Have you ever seen a pit bull fight? Are the dogs illegal? The, well, the fights are illegal, but I'm just saying, before I knew the Lord, okay, and I had my dog named Pancho. It was a toothless Pancho. He was toothless because he was stupid and used to chase, chase cars and bite the tires, and he ripped his teeth out. So he only had his molars, back molars, and, and so he got in a fight with this pit bull. And, and, he jumped on, the pit bull jumped on top of his back and locked jaw on, the, on top of his head. So I grabbed that dog by the nose. I jumped on top of the pit bull, grabbed him by the nose because he was killing my dog. Pulled him up, crack, crack, started busting, cracking his jaw. And you know what happened? That jaw came loose. Boom. And you know who was fighting that dog? I was. <laughs> that dog took off. <laughs> My dog was fine, okay? So not a sad ending story. He was fine. He went to the doctor, got stitches and all that, you know. But the point being is that, that the pit bulls, you get, them, you get locked jaw on those, do those dogs. Go, that's, their, that's their anger mechanism. They stay honed in on it and start going for it. You got to be just like that pit bull. You got to stay focused. And it doesn't really matter what you go through, what you face, because you're going to go through stuff. But because you have a temporary setback, in, in, a, in, the, in the avenue of a defeat or a failure, it doesn't mean that you, it's time for you to quit. Because that's where generally people go. They stop moving forward. Something stops them. It, it's just like the cartoon. Uh, what was that uh, movie? Remember where the ants were walking? Was it ants? A bug's life, I think, yes. And that leaf, remember they're carrying all the stuff going across, and the leaf comes down and floats and stops, and then they're like, whoa, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> you know, because you always see ants, they'll stop, and they won't go forward. <laughs> you know, and then the guy will say, calm down, come around. We're going to go around the leaf. <laughs> well, well, it's the same persistence, the same idea of persistence, so if you see it, you'll be persistent. Okay, so now let me, give you, let me give you a definition on the word persistence. Really good definition. Ready? We got imagination. Oh, you know what? I got to give you one more on imagination. This, this bears me. Uh, I think it's important for you to have this. Uh, where is it at? Hey... Oh, yeah, this is it right here. This is really good. You're going to like this. Imagination. Ability to face and resolve difficulties. 